Listen, after 150 hours and a lack of showers, I have some thoughts. Hey, what's up, guys? I am Nova. Welcome back. It's been uh, some time since I've put out a video. Figured, you know what? After you know, spending all this time with Baldur's Gate 3, maybe I should do something. Talk about it even, maybe just a little bit, because I'm not doing a review for Critical Hit. I never even planned on playing the game, truth be told, but a community member, Dabbeard, uh, spent some cash, sent me a, a gift copy, and I said, well... I was down bad with, uh, with, uh, with the Rona at the time. Needed something to pass the time with and stream while we waited for Starfield and whatever else to arrive this super busy month. So I hopped in and now here we are. Like I said in the intro, 150 hours later, just finished uh, the, the campaign on the live stream oh, within the last hour. And, uh, and so I want to just have a little discussion about whatever my thoughts were on the game up to this point. Some of it might include some of the topics I covered in my previous video. I don't know. As you probably have put it together by now, I have very minimal forethought. I like to just go in there and run my mouth. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, well, deal with it. I also like, I also like the bets on how often I'm going to put on and take off my glasses. So maybe I'll just... For fun. Uh, so, I guess to start the video, I'm just going to talk, uh, generally speaking, about uh, my thoughts on the game. And it's not like in a, in a review review form, but, you know, what my general thoughts were uh, about it. Um, since people were asking me if I, if I was going to review it. Uh, the, and since I'm not, well, here we go. Baldur's Gate 3 is... Uh, for all intents and purposes, one of the best games made in the last decade, and arguably in the top three in the last decade. And that is from the perspective of, uh, or, or in regard to, not just the sheer volume of content this game has, because there is a, there's, a, there's a lot of content, but also the quality of that content from beginning to end is of a higher average level than nearly any game I've played in recent memory. I, honest to God, can't say I can think of uh, any off of the top of my head. And it made me think about probably the last time I would have had some sort of similar experience would have been perhaps um, in the similar genre, Mass Effect 2, perhaps. In terms of just how much the whole experience from front to end uh, kind of wowed me. And, uh, and I suppose in some funny, uh, you know, way, th towards the end, it's almost a Mass Effect experience uh, anyway. So, yeah, very, uh, some, some parallels there for sure. That being said, um, I do think it's, 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 a, it's an important distinction between this and some other games that came out this year. Because the immediate question that I've been asked now multiple times is, is this the game of the year? And for me, for, uh, for the games that I've played that have come out this year, yes, it is up to this point. I haven't played Starfield yet. I am about to do that. That's the next one. I'm going to have a review for that on Critical Hit. But uh, I haven't played it yet. But I don't, I don't foresee it being better than Baldur's Gate 3. Even if Baldur's Gate 3 isn't typically my kind of game, not my jam, per se. I'm not, I'm not really big on this style of game, typically. Uh, there's, just, there's just very little wrong with it. Uh, I, if, I, if I was forced to give it, you know, if I was forced to give it uh, a review score, the, have a critical hit. I, I was talking about this on the stream and uh, just not long ago here, half hour ago or, or so, and I, I had... I was trying to talk myself out of giving it a six. I have a, you know, five scale, a critical hit, five stars. But then, like, for games that approach damn near perfection, you know, no game can be truly perfect, but for the games that, like, approach perfection and really do a phenomenal job from, from front to back, I have, I have a reserved sixth star to distinguish those games because there are lots of games that I consider to be five stars, but then there are, like, the pantheon of, of games that are you know, that, that little extra, had that little sprinkle on top kind of a situation. 
And I tried to, I was, I was trying to almost talk myself out of giving it a six if I was going to review it. And I would never truly know, probably unless I sat down and wrote a full review. But I would say it's, it's very likely a, a game that I would strongly consider giving a six, which you can't convert that to any 10 scale. It would be a 12 at a 10, but it's, but it's not, uh, you know, my scale was never meant to be converted to numbers per se. Uh, and hopefully you guys get the, get the picture. Um, there's just not very much wrong with it, really. Uh, the, the bugs that it has are being worked out. There's not very many bugs to begin with. The bugs that are there are rarely um, something that uh, pull you completely out of the experience or ruin your game. It's not going to, like, you know, ruin your save file or some crazy nonsense. Very minor stuff. And, the, and, and, and truthfully, the stuff that is a bit busted... It's hard to be particularly upset. There are so many systems at play here in this game that it would be shocking to me uh, if there weren't any bugs. It's just there's a lot going on all the time and a lot of options available to you and many that you may not even think that you can even do. Like It, may not, it might not even dawn on you that you have some of these options. And so, uh, you know, the bugs that are there are typically just things that, you know, it's when you have a game of this scale... With this much going on, you have to expect some stuff. And we're definitely not talking about very aggressive, almost, you know, game-breaking stuff. We're barely even talking minor bugs. So, very little wrong, uh, wrong with it in that regard. Incredible music. Just fantastic score. Unbelievable voice acting. Probably the, the standout to me above everything else was the average quality of the voice acting. Absolutely spectacular. Scary good. Whether it's an NPC that has a one-off thing that you're just like, hey, you, you talk to them, you don't even have a dialogue option, you just hear them ramble about something for 5 to 15 seconds. Everything that you hear is more or less top-notch. I, 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 I can't think of very many games that... I mean, there will be games that I could perhaps think of in which there were an individual performance here and there within those games that are as good or better than the best parts of Baldur Ga uh, Baldur's Gate 3's uh, uh, voice acting. But the, the, the scope and the quality level is, is crazy. It's insane. Which also indicates the direction was really good. One of the things that you'll notice a lot in games that have a lot of dialogue um, or dialogue or brand branching options within a story and whatnot and and perhaps even a situation where you can have interchangeable characters where you one player might have different ones over the other is that if the direction is not really good for vo the, the voice acting part you can have uh you can have one or more tonal shifts within a conversation between two characters or between the main character and and, and a character in which it just suddenly doesn't make any sense uh, and it's, and it's just, a, that's a, a, that's typically a direction thing, but the direction here, phenomenal, the delivery, amazing. And it really went a long way in bringing, uh, the story to life. Speaking of the story, also really well done. Tons of twists and turns, lots of variable options, stuff that, uh, you know, you'd have, you'd have to go back and play this game multiple times. Sometimes I would just save before like a, a relatively obvious option where I would have multiple branching paths, you know, in terms of how it would turn out. And I'd just go back and just explore what I had, because there's just so much. And you gotta choose, you gotta eventually gotta choose, right? But very well written story. Very well written characters on average. Not a lot of weak characters involved here, in, in terms of uh, their personalities, and their very, the variability of their personalities, their backstories, um, and their interactions with each other and with the main character all very, very, very well done. And given the number of them, that's, once again, very impressive. Uh, the actual combat and whatnot itself kind of comes down to, do you like D&D style combat? If you do, you're likely going to have a very good time here. If you don't, it's not that you can't have a good time. It's just that perhaps there will be some things that, that are less than ideal for you that you would have preferred it a different way but in, it's not that it's executed per se poorly it's executed very well especially once again given everything that's going on it's amazing that things don't break more frequently but maybe it's not your thing that might change your perspective on it and even then 
So the way that I've been breaking all of it down, really, and I could I could wax poetic about this game for quite some time, and I already have. I'm, I'm, my glass is off. I can't even see how long this recording is going. God knows how long this video is going to be. Um, but the way that I've described it for people who are saying, so, you know, is this for me? Is this for me? If they haven't already bought it. Um, because, you know, a lot of people are seeing the, seeing the Metacritic score slash uh, the Open Critic score, and they're just they're super like, oh my God, should I... I can I miss it on this game or, or not? Baldur's Gate 3 is, if you are a D&D fan, the best video game example of Dungeons & Dragons. It's the best. And it's, and it's a, by a margin. So if you like Dungeons & Dungeons and Dragons, there are, I can't even think of how, like, how many ways, like, yeah, I, it would be almost impossible for you to not think that it's a phenomenal game. I, and I can't imagine you not, you know, enjoying it, whether you play it by yourself or with a group of people, because there is a multiplayer option available to you. If you are new to D&D and you've not played any of the tabletop stuff and you're looking for inroads for how to break into it and you don't have, a, you know, a, a group to play with in person. And so you're just maybe a video you're thinking, maybe a, a video game version of D&D is the way to break in and, and learn some of this stuff. Again, Baldur's Gate 3 is the best game for you. That's the easiest way to describe this game. Um, and, and, and truly, I guess another, another way to describe this game in terms of, or try to get across uh, you know, my feelings on this game, would be to say that, uh, you know, there, there are games that get very highly rated on, you know, uh, on, on Metacritic, Open Critic, uh, you know, the combination of of uh, review scores from professionals and otherwise. Um, I think everyone understands that there are times in which, in which some games get very high scores and then those high scores don't seem to really match with reality, at least in, in, in a, a more long-term scenario. There's like a very short honeymoon period and then it all kind of you know, collapses you know, down around. I think some of that phenomenon has to do with the fact that a lot of games have like uh, put a lot of effort into making the first four to six hours like the best possible bits of the game. And then after that, you know, it can fall off a bit. And there's and truth be told, there's a not insignificant, insignificant number of reviewers who are so busy. They have so many games going on and they are giving these games so late, uh, you know, or, or so close, so close to the embargo date that, uh, you know, it's very difficult for reviewers uh of of uh who, who get these advanced copies to always you know give a a long-term view because ultimately they have to hit embargo because if they don't the website doesn't get uh you know views for these higher profile games and that's a problem uh, and i say all that to say that that uh that that yeah sometimes i think everyone can see when they don't quite line up and Baldur's Gate 3 is not an example of that Baldur's Gate 3 is a rare example that you in or you would have to work very hard to make a case that Baldur's Gate 3 does not deserve the 95 plus 97, whatever it is, average score. I, I, I don't know what the argument would be, uh, but you could try. And so, um, you know, I, I would say that's it. What's another example? Well, we had Elden Ring is another great example of that. And I, I don't think it's, it's a coincidence that those two games are the ones where we had this discussion crop up on social media from other developers and and uh and then eventually outward into into you know the youtuber space and everyone else talking about it about this whole you know don't you can't you know it's uh, the industry can't be expected to uphold the standards of something like an elden ring or the industry can't be expected you know don't expect every game in the genre to suddenly be Baldur's gate 3 etc etc that whole shtick i already have a video on that you can go watch that if you want um and I don't, yeah, I don't think it's a, co a coincidence that that's the case. You know what you don't hear people say about when it's going to be just to be like unfair, you know, whatever? Diablo 4, which if you were to go look, well, I'll just do that right now. Diablo 4 on Metacritic sits at, after 96 reviews, critic reviews. Uh, and 86. You don't, you don't hear people talking about that pushing the envelope or anything. And there's no way most people that are playing Diablo 4 
would likely give it an 86 right now, which is probably why the user rating after 8300 reviews is sitting somewhere around a 2. Or... And this is a bit, and this is a bit of a different uh, uh, situation, but I do, I do want to use it as a, as an example of this, uh, is, is Tears of the Kingdom. So, the Tears of the Kingdom is currently sitting at a 96 on Metacritic. Some, I've heard some reviewers call it the greatest game ever made. That's 152 critic reviews sitting at a 96. It is after just shy of 10,000 user reviews sitting at an 8.1. Um... I mean, that's a pretty steep discrepancy. Um, but the, the reason why I bring that up is, is that there are other aspects to, to take into consideration. There are some games that, that get demonstrably higher scores because of the intellectual property that it's tied to. And I think if there was ever to be an example of that, as, uh, as good of a game as, as, uh, as Tears of the Kingdom is, I think that's a really good example of it. I think I think that it is an inflated score, and I think that I think that user score, in all honesty, is much closer to the reality of the situation, somewhere around an, an, an eighty. But and, and so you don't hear people go, "Oh, well, Tears of the Kingdom is just pushing the genre into places where nobody is ever going to be able to match it, and it's unfair, or whatever." You don't hear people talking about it like that, right? And I don't. I think you know they don't talk about it in the same breath as they do Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate three, and I think there's a reason for that. I think Baldur's Gate 3 li li uh, or, 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 uh, lives up to all of the hype, if you want to say it that way. It, it lives up to its Metacritic scores, and, um, and I think that it is, especially since it's in a genre that is a bit more niche than, than most, um, it's perhaps less, less likely to fall victim to some of the, um, the bloat in scores that uh, that other games receive. So Baldur's Gate 3 is also at 96 right now, and it's after 12,000 user score, or user ratings, which is even more than Tears of the Kingdom, it's sitting at just under 9, it's 8.9. .9. And yeah, I think, I, again, I think that's for good reason. I, uh, so... Um, it's a really long-winded way of just saying that, uh, that to put more emphasis on just how good this game is, is that I personally feel is that it is one of the few games in the last 10 years that scored very highly from almost everyone, whether you are a, a, or whether they are a critic, uh, a seasoned critic, or the, uh, the average user. Uh, it's, it's, it's it, I think it, I think it's one of the few games that actually makes good on those scores so yeah those are my general thoughts on the game as you know from a quality perspective um i do believe at this time like i said before it's game of the year uh i would be i would i, I wouldn't be shocked if tears of the kingdom brings a home brings home a lot of rewards i'd be disappointed um because the quality of game between these two uh, between those two is is uh it's it's really not it's it's really and honestly if you could take your bias out of like, you know, are you a huge, you know, a huge Zelda fan? Uh, and maybe this genre of like the, the Baldur's Gate uh, occupies is not, is not your thing. If you take that out and you're just trying to find like a more objective leaning example of what a game of the year would be, I don't even know how you make a case against Baldur's Gate right now. It's, it's just, it would be, it would be a very challenging thing to do indeed. So let's move on from that. Um... And step into uh, another part of this, which I wanted to uh, talk about, which is kind of where does Larian go from here? And I think that's a, a question that a lot of studios that, uh, or not a lot, because there aren't a lot that get into this situation, but that uh, a question that studios like them eventually have to come to when they they reach this kind of pinnacle. There's not a lot of, of, of things that they could do to dramatically improve upon something like Baldur's Gate 3 without what I would loosely refer to as breaking the mold a bit. I'm not saying shatter it and start from scratch, but breaking it a bit so that it can be built upon. 
uh, in ways that this game doesn't, you know, that, that Baldur's Gate 3 does not currently have. I don't know what that would be. I'm just saying this in, in broad strokes. Because just like similar, again, I'll, I'll reference Elden Ring. And I said this, I said this when talking about Elden Ring before. I don't know if it was on a video or not. But, you know, where does FromSoft go from Elden Ring? They have this absolute, Elden Ring is the pinnacle of everything that makes a great FromSoft game. They, they hit everything and they hit it at scale. So sometimes, you know, the, the question of what do we do in the next game is, well, let's just do what we just did because it was successful and then make the game bigger. You're not going to make a bigger map than Elden Ring feasibly, right? There, you know, that's, that's not likely going to be how you move on to the next game. You almost have to break the mold a bit and try something new. And maybe it won't work out, but you have to kind of find a new avenue to have something fresh to build off of. You don't throw, you know, everything out the door that you already have that's successful, but you need to find ways to continue to build on without stagnating. And um, some companies or some developers uh, are lucky enough to put themselves in that situation. And I think FromSoft and Larian are two examples of uh, this happening. Where do you go with this for, for Baldur's Gate 3? What, what comes next for Larian? Um, and, and I think that's a important thing for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's important that, um, that devs like Larian are still, are still pushing to get to that point. The whole, the whole discussion around it's unfair for the other devs and whatever and don't expect everyone else to... Well, somebody has to be a North Star in the industry, right? Everyone needs to have something to look for, ideally. You know, what is a prime example? And Larian right now in the RPG genre is that North Star with Baldur's Gate 3. And that's a good thing. Because with throughout the video game industry, there are a lot of examples of companies that a lot of people were used to putting out games of the quality of Baldur's Gate 3 that no longer do that. They've fallen off a cliff. They've become incredibly, uh, you know, over-commoditized, over-monetized, over, over, uh, you know, simplified for the sake of, of profit maxim uh, maximization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and people get frustrated with these companies, like a Blizzard, for example, because, because they're used to them putting out insanely high-quality games that aren't representative of, all, of the, what I've just, you know, rattled on, or rattled off. And so it becomes very disappointing and frustrating. And now you have Larian, who's building up this uh, amazing amount of, uh, of goodwill. And I think when you build up this amount of goodwill, it's great because it does allow you a little bit of wiggle room as well. So they can do something, try to break that mold a little bit so that they can build off on it and not just, you know, stagnate here. And if it doesn't, like, if it's not 100% of a, of, of a smash it out of the park situation, they have more than enough goodwill right now that the player base is going to assume that this is all in, uh, in, in an attempt to, to reach a new height, and it's going to be some stumbling blocks, and they'll just be okay with it. Nah, these, some of these other companies don't have that anymore. Blizzard's basically chewed up all of their goodwill, for example. Uh, and I keep harping on Blizzard, but that's a really easy example right now. And so, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's an interesting thing for Elden Ring's example in Baldur's Gate 3. Where do you go from there and from Soft and Larian being in similar situations where now they have to figure out, uh, you know, what to do? Because, in my opinion, Baldur's Gate 3 and, and Elden Ring are the pinnacle of what each of those two companies represent uh, in their modern era, individually. Oh, where am I now? Honestly, that's kind of like it. I kind of merged a couple of things. Would you look at that? The video's not 45 minutes long. Who would have thought? But yeah, wow, what a game. What a game. If you haven't, if you haven't played Baldur's Gate 3, and you are asking yourself the question, should I hop in? I would strongly suggest, especially if you're a D&D &D fan, to give it a shot. No question. And if you're not already into D&D &D and you're looking for an inroad, like I said earlier in this video, it's not a half bad idea. Uh, it's, a, it's, the best, it's, the best, it's the best option you've got. And it's not like, it's, I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. It is, it is inarguably 
And if you do, ar- well, maybe uh, I should never say inarguably, but it is very easily argue, arguably the best overall game made in a decade. Regardless of genre. That's how good that game is. So just rock with that. Maybe you want to pick it up and give it a shot. If you've already played it, without spoilers, of course, let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts were on the game and the random topics I decided to just... (laughs) rattle on. Maybe someday I'll have a format, but today is not the day. Uh, And and let me know what your thoughts are on on what I uh, I just covered here. And if you have anything else to uh, to talk about about Baldur's Gate uh, 3, then of course let me know in the comment section. We'd love to hear uh, about your experience with the game. Thank you very much for sitting here and listening to me do whatever this is. I've got to go and get this video ready to, to put up. And if I'm lucky, do it before the podcast. And then I'll be seeing you guys hopefully real soon. Thank you once again. Stay safe out there. Have a good one. And peace!